Hey there, tech enthusiasts! Welcome back to Fast Cabling. So have you ever wondered how massive security camera systems are managed for sprawling facilities like airports, industrial complexes, or even smart cities? It's no small feat. So today, we're diving deep into the world of Pawn, passive optical networks, and how you can set up a high-performance security camera system by integrating power over Ethernet switches with an optical network terminal. So this guy is your ultimate step-by-step -step walkthrough. So stick around because you don't want to miss this. So let's start with the big question. Why use Pawn for large-scale security system? Well, if you've ever struggled with long cable runs, high costs, and maintaining stable connection over vast areas, Pawn might just be the solution you're looking for. This technology isn't just cost-effective, it's scalable, efficient, and can cover distances up to 20 kilometers, all while keeping things surprisingly simple. Large-scale security setup come with their own sets of challenges. Think about it. Managing dozens or even hundreds of cameras spread across a facility can lead to a tangled web of cables, inconsistent power supply, and skyrocketing costs. And that's where Pawn shine. And by centralizing your network and reducing the numbers of cable runs, you're not only cutting costs, but also simplifying deployment. Now, choosing the right security camera for a pawn system is crucial, so let's break down the options. First, Doom cameras. They're compact, discreet, and perfect for indoor spaces like offices or hallways. Next, we have bullet cameras. They're designed for long-range outdoor surveillance and are ideal for parking lots or perimeter monitoring. Lastly, the PDZ camera. Pen to zoom beasts that cover large areas and offer remote control capabilities. And they're a favorite for stadiums and industrial sites. And when selecting cameras, you should consider a few key factors. Resolution. 1080p is great, but 4K gives you unmatched clarity. Frame rates for smooth video and bandwidth requirement to ensure smooth streaming. You should also look for features like intelligent human detection and vehicle recognition to minimize false alarm and boost efficiency. And for outdoor setup, make sure the cameras are rated at least IP66 or higher for waterproofing. Oh, and let's don't forget PoE capabilities, power over Ethernet. It is a lifesaver for simplified cabling. Next up, the PoE switches. Choosing the right one is all about power and scalability. For example, if you're powering four cameras that each requires 30 watts and your switch needs a power budget of at least 120 watts, and you can decide whether you need a managed switch for extra control or an unmanaged one for simplicity. And for high power devices like the PDZ cameras, you can look for PoE++ switches that delivers up to 90 watts. And our lineups includes options like WebSmart PoE switch, 5 port 90 watts PoE++ switch, and 16 or 24 port managed PoE switch with SFP support for ultimate flexibility. And now we're in front of the demonstration board, and let's talk PON and LNT basics. A PON system has three main components. First, the Optical Line Terminal, OLT, which acts as the central distribution hub. Then, Splitter. This divides the optical signal into multiple branches. And finally, the ONU or NT, Optical Network Terminal or Unit. It converts optical signal into Ethernet for your cameras and PoE switches. And together, these components simplify your network architecture reduce costs, and support long-distance coverage with ease. So next, let's get our hands on. So first, we have our network video recorder, already connected to a big screen television using HDMI cable. Next, I'm going to use the Ethernet cable to connect it to the OLT, so we can send data and display video footage. Connect it to the RJ45 port. 
Next to it, we have the palm port. We are going to use this fiber optic cable. It has two strings. Let's use string one. Connect it to the palm port. And follow up our fiber optic cable to the 2 in 16 out splitter. So you can split our fiber optical signal. And this is a string one. Let's connect it to the input port. We have 16 output port. So I'm going to randomly pick one using this fiber patch cord to connect it to our ONT. So this is an outdoor version. It will convert the fiber optical signal into Ethernet signal. So I'm going to use this short patch cord to connect it to a WebSmart PoE switch. So next I'm going to plug in three short patch cord, one for the PDZ camera, one for the bullet camera, and one for our doom shade camera. So send both power and data to all of our cameras. Or if you have an ONU or ONT with the PoE capability, that means you don't even need to add an extra PoE switch. And we also have an ONU with Wi-Fi capability, so you can plug in the porn port directly and distribute Wi-Fi signal. So now we are going to check out the live video feed. Now before you go full deployment, you can test each connection for stability and handle your fiber optic cable carefully to avoid damage and double check your camera placement. Doom camera works indoor while bully camera excel outdoor. Now we're looking at our big screen monitor and we have all the video footage already displaying. This BDC camera here. So you can see all of our cameras are displaying live video feed. So let's talk some more about our gears. Manage PoE switches allows you to control bandwidth allocation and prioritize critical cameras, ensuring that essential areas like entry points or high traffic zones always have sufficient resources. For instance, streaming a 1080p camera requires about 4 to 6 megabit per second, while a 4K camera might need 15 to 25 megabit per second. So managed switches let you balance this demand seamlessly. And redundancy is crucial for any mission critical system. So you can consider using dual fiber connection for backup in case of a line failure. Additionally, a reliable backup power source ensures your system stay operational during outages and giving you peace of mind when it matters most. Monitoring tools integrated with your ONT help you maintain optimal performance. These tools provide real-time insights into bandwidth usage and signal strength, enabling you to quickly address issues before they escalate. And to avoid network congestion, you can opt for a PoE switch with SFP ports. These ports allow you to use fiber optic cables for uplink connections, ensuring high-speed interference-free data transfer. And if your ONT lacks built-in fiber support, a fiber media converter can bridge the gap and maintaining the efficiency of your network. So why should you consider PON for your security system? It's all about simplified deployment, long-distance coverage, centralized management, and effortless scalability. In fact, one of our recent projects involved installing a PON system at an industrial complex where it seamlessly supported over 50 cameras across a massive area. So there you have it, a complete guide to setting up PON for a large-scale security system. Now, if you found this video helpful, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and leave a comment with your questions or ideas for future videos. And until next time, stay secure and tech savvy.